Hi there, and welcome to The Salt and Pepper, where we cook for real life using real food, and we keep it real simple. And today we're gonna use the air fryer feature of the Ninja Foodie, and we're gonna make fresh cut shoestring french fries. So what we need to get started with is just one russet potato. This will make at least four servings of french fries. We have a little bowl with about a tablespoon of olive oil, and I have a bowl of water here. I also have a little bit of salt that we will add in a little bit later. So the bowl of water is very important because we want to soak our fresh cut fries for at least an hour before you go to fry them. Um, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. Let's focus now on how to cut your potato. It's really easy, so don't freak out. It's super easy. You want to have a large, sharp knife, and first thing we're gonna do is take one little slice right off of here, just like that. You can put that to the side because we'll make that into french fries as well. Now, turn your potato over. So now we have a flat cutting surface. You don't wanna cut something that's round because it's just gonna move all around and make it a lot more difficult. So cut that flat piece and then we're ready to start slicing. So what we're gonna do is slice down at about a quarter of an inch straight down the potato. So I'm gonna just keep slicing, quarter of an inch. You wanna keep your fingers back. You can use this part here just to kind of secure the potato and cut straight down. We're gonna do that till we get to the point where it's not, uh, it's kind of wanting to turn a little bit. Push these to the side. Put it down again on the flat surface and continue. Quarter of an inch slice. I'm gonna turn it over again and slice. These do not have to be exact. And if you have a mandolin, you could also use that as well to make these long slices on your potato. I just find that it's easier to do it by hand and quicker and it's easier to wash a knife than it is that mandolin. Okay, so now we're gonna go and we're gonna do it again this way. And if it's a little large, if you want them smaller than that, you can cut them again. And now that is exactly what we want. That is a shoe string French fry. It's gonna be super crispy. And we're gonna plop these in the water as we finish cutting. Okay, the other thing you wanna do is get your air fryer preheated. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that while I cut the rest of these up and throw them in the water. I'm gonna start it and hit the air crisp, go up to 400, and I'm just gonna put this up to 20 minutes and go ahead and start it. And that way it's gonna get preheated. I also have the fryer basket inside with the little legs on. No water, no nothing in there, just the fryer basket. So we'll let that get preheated while I finish slicing these up. I've got all of these potatoes cut and it took me less than five minutes. It, it really is easy to do and there's nothing like fresh cut french fries that you make at home. It's really wonderful. So I have these submerged in water and like I said before, you wanna keep them in this water for about an hour at least or you could even make them the night before, set them in the refrigerator and let them stay in the water overnight. That would be fine. What's going to happen is the water's going to pull out the starch from the potato and the water gets pretty uh, cloudy. Now this has been maybe three hours and so you can see the difference in the water here and I could already see the starch coming out of these potatoes. But what's really interesting and in what happens and what makes the potato after you soak it really crisp is the way that the, the texture is. So this is actually pretty firm. Whereas these are kind of a little, they have a little more give to them. So taking out that starch is an important part for a crispy fry. Is it absolutely necessary? No, but it will make the fry a lot better. Now, if you don't like the shoestring cut fries, which are gonna be um, you know, tender on the inside, but really crispy on the outside, you can certainly just cut them a little bit thicker and make them into steak fries if you'd like. Okay, 
So we're going to put this over here. And the next step that we want to do is take our fries out of this water and dry them off. And you could use paper towels for this. I just happen to have these flour sacks that I absolutely love to use for drying things. And I also use them for straining yogurt. They work perfectly. Um, better than cheesecloth, in my opinion. So I'm just going to take some of these french fries out of here, kind of lay them down. You can see how this one really curled over. These are going to be great, I can tell, just by the feel of them. They're really going to crunch up nicely. Okay, so now we're just going to wrap them in this towel and just dry off the excess water. You don't have to get it all off, but I just leave them like that for a few minutes. I can put this away. Now I have a little bit of olive oil in here. I don't have one of those sprayers. If you have a sprayer, you could certainly put the french fries in and just spray your oil on top. That would work fine. I had one for a while, but mine clogged and I could not get it clean. So um, I had to throw it away and I have not bought another one yet. So, um, so this is going to work. I'm just going to throw it in. It, it's about a tablespoon of oil and you might uh, think that's a little bit much, but it'll just coat the fries and there will be some left over. So I'm going to dump these in here now and I will sort of mix them around in the oil so that they're coated and then we'll sprinkle them with a little bit of salt and we'll get them into our uh, fryer basket. So just toss these around with your fingers here and I'm just going to put a tad bit of salt and just sort of sprinkle them over, just a light dusting. We will also resalt these when they come out of the fryer basket. Give them a little twirl there and open up the preheated Ninja Foodi and it is nice and hot in there. And we're just gonna put these in and I try to put them in a, in a single layer as much as possible. Uh, some are gonna be on top of the others. We're gonna uh, move them around as they, as they uh, start to cook. Okay, perfect. Now, we're gonna set this down and um, the time is set here for 11 minutes. Let me put this up, to, or actually I'm gonna put it down to 10 minutes and we're gonna check them about every two minutes and do a little flip. All right, we're just at about two minutes that they have cooked and I'm gonna go ahead and open the lid and give them a little toss, just kind of gently. The reason why I'm doing that is because I want, if there's any that are stacked on top, of the other ones, I want to move them around so that they get equal amounts of the air frying action. And just close the lid. You don't want to leave the lid up too long because you don't want the heat to escape. So try to make this a quick little thing and then pop the lid back down and continue to cook for another, I, I think we could go another three minutes and then I'll check it again. All right, so it's been another three minutes and I'm just going to give them another quick flip. And I can start to see some of them are getting a little brown. Um, I want to be gentle though with this because I just actually uh, broke one and I don't want to do that. So I'm going to try to be pretty gentle as I turn and we're going to get this lid back down and keep on going. Now I have the time set to 10 minutes, but it, it may take 12, it may take 15. I'm just going to keep an eye on it and I'll add time as I need to. The thicker the cut of the french fry, obviously, the longer it's going to take to uh, get that crispy skin. Okay, so these have been in um, about eight minutes now, and let me just take a peek. And yep, they're moving right along. They're still not done, and I don't want this to go down to the cool, you know, count all the way down. So I'm going to go ahead and add in a few more minutes here. There we go. Um, and we'll just keep checking. So I'll check and, and let you guys know how long it took total. So I checked them a few more times, probably at about two minutes and then maybe at about four minutes. I checked them and flipped them and they are cooking up really beautifully. So when this is finished, it will go to the cool down. I will let that cycle through. It just takes a few seconds. And then I will put them into this colander that I've lined with paper towel. Uh, this is an important step because you do want any of the oil to drain off that and as the fries cool they're going to become even crispier so i really suggest doing this and sprinkling with a little bit of salt and then letting them be for a couple of minutes and then you can eat them okay great let's take a peek oh and they are absolutely perfect this is how i like them they are nice and crunchy and brown can you hear that 
Now, if you don't like yours as crunchy, you certainly can cook them less. But my husband and I, if we go out and, and order French fries, we always ask them to do them extra crispy. All right, these are looking great. Now, I'm doing this kind of the hard way. I can take my little finger mitts here and just be careful because the pot is really hot and get them around there. And then I can just dump them in. Move this around a little bit, there. Dump them in, perfect. Now you can see I only did one serving, um, but you certainly can do more than one at a time, but you're gonna want to flip them and constantly you know, rotate them, and you might need to increase the time a little bit. So while these are cooling off here, I'm just gonna get a little bit of salt and just sort of just sprinkle a little bit of salt. And you could use whatever seasoning you like. If you like um, pepper, salt and pepper, you can use that. Old Bay, you could use that, whatever you like. Um, but I think I'm just gonna keep it with the salt. And we'll put those aside, they'll cool a little bit, and then I will taste them. To go with our french fries, we've also made air fried hamburgers in the Ninja Foodie that are absolutely delicious. And you can view that video right up there. You don't want to miss it. I have one that I stuffed with sauteed onions and blue cheese that is so perfect. It's like the best burger I've ever had. And my husband loves his just traditional, so it's an unstuffed burger with some cheddar on top. So be sure to watch that video. And if you like this video, give me a thumbs up and be sure to leave me a comment and subscribe, which you can do at the end, which will be right over there. Hit the notification bell so that you get notified when we put out a new video. All right, so let's taste these. So they are perfect. I mean, I can tell, like, oh my goodness. They are better than the frozen kind. Better than a lot of restaurants, guys, really. Oh, I just love these. Just a little bit of salt. Wow. It is so easy to make hand-cut shoestring french fries at home. So give it a try and let me know how it works out for you. Till next time, bye-bye.